So welcome to this Quintus Tech Talk. Uh, today we're going to be talking with Sebastian Proppa from RISE, the Research Institute of Sweden. Sebastian is one of the foremost uh, researchers in the area of aluminium alloys uh, for additive manufacturing and working a lot with lightweighting of products. So welcome to this talk, Sebastian. Can you give us a bit of background about yourself, uh, where you come from, what you do and what you're working with? Thank you. Um, so my name is Sebastian Proper. I have a master's degree in uh, material science from Uppsala University. I've been working as a researcher at RISE uh, in additive manufacturing for four years now. Um, uh, there I work uh, along the entire value chain. So I work with design for AM, process optimization, uh, uh, process permit and development for new materials, um, also working hands-on with the machines, then you know, working with the post-processing um, and characterization. So the entire value chain, basically. So Sebastian, can you tell us a, a bit about what you're researching at the moment, what the main focus areas are? Um, the main focus area at the moment is uh, thin wall capabilities of uh, aluminum uh, printed parts. Um, so we're comparing different uh, kind of um, post-processing routes uh, to see how we do affect the mechanical properties of the uh, printed parts. Uh, we're talking about uh, doing heat treatments, uh, hipping, um, different surface uh, finishing, so machining and uh, heatization, and also comparing different uh, process parameters to see how they will affect the uh, performance of the printed parts. So, I mean, as, as part of this, I, I guess post-processing with, with hot isostatic pressing and high pressure heat treatment is a, is a kind of a key area. What are the main areas where you can see something uh, really helping there? One main area is when we want to decrease the production time. Um, we can um, uh, use different kind of process parameters to in increase the time of the printing. So uh, the increasing the speed of the laser or uh, increasing the layer thickness of the powder bed. Um, but that often lead to a poor, poorer uh, printed part, so uh, much more porosity in the printed part. But if you can reduce the printing time with uh, half, then we can do post-processing like hip to close the pores and uh, uh, have an all over faster production time than if we would have printed with a, a high density part from the beginning. Right. And, and, and I know that you have this fantastic graph showing the, uh, the printing speed and how that can be affected by, by, by the printing parameters. What kind of speed increases have you been looking at? So we've been looking at uh, increasing the lace speed to uh, over up to 2,500 millimeters per second almost. Um, we decided on, on a window where we were comfortable in managing to print the parts. Uh, we were also looking at uh, different layer thickness, so using the kind of standard of 30 micrometer layer thickness and increasing it to 70 micrometer layer thickness. That could even be increased more to up to 90 micrometer layer thickness if we wanted to, but we wanted to stay in, in, a, in a comfort zone, so to say, to be able to print uh, uh, good enough parts. So we were able to print these parts uh, uh, with uh, uh, quite high uh, density, but not good enough. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and, and then yeah. you were able to close that later on with the high pressure heat treatment then? Yeah, so we, we took some of the most promising uh, parameter sets, you know, that have high speed, but good enough density and uh, moved on to try to close those with, those with hipping. And we were able to close uh, uh, some of them, uh, we could see that if you have too much open porosity in the printed parts, you, we could not close uh, the, uh, all of the pores uh, sufficiently enough. But uh, if we don't uh, have um, too much open porosity, we could actually close a lot of the pores and get a good dense uh, part okay. and print much faster. 
And, and when you say much faster, how, how, how much faster can we achieve a fully dense part using this process with high-speed printing in combination with high-pressure heat treatment? Uh, so we could uh, eventually, what we could see was that we could uh, print with uh, uh, almost 150% faster production rate uh, uh, using a faster laser speed and uh, higher layer thickness. Wow. Uh, so that's that's a really good uh, improvement, especially when we're talking about printing big parts that can take several days. We can uh, decrease the production time a lot. Okay, so if you can increase the speed so much, uh, Sebastian, what what's interesting then is the quality of the parts after this high speed process, including the the, the high speed printing and the and the hot isostatic pressing with with heat treatment included. What's the quality like? So when increasing the speed, uh, we can see that we we always get the, like maximum for the density where we get the best density. Um, uh, but for the fastest uh, laser speeds, we can see that uh, we have a decrease in uh, in the density. Uh, so we we are as low as 95, 96 percent density, which is not not what we want to have. So uh, when introducing the hipping, we can uh, close them and get uh, a full, fully dense part. Uh, if if the if the open porosity is uh, low enough. So Sebastian, can you tell us about what the results are based on the high speed printing parameters in combination with high pressure heat treatment, including the uh, quenching technology we have, the URQ, Uniform Rapid Quenching, uh, a, a kind of a mimic of the T6 heat treatment. What, what kind of mechanical results are you ending up with? Uh, what we can see is uh, compared to uh, the S printed status with, that we get a lo uh, slightly lower um, yield strength than uh, in the s printed state uh, but we see a vast improvement for in the elongation before break we we get the kind of homogenization of the material uh, right so what kind of elongation values do you are, are you looking at so when doing in s printed state we have a, a, around three percent but uh, introducing the a hipping, we can get uh, up to 8-10% elongation before, before break, depending on the hip temperature uh, and such, but uh, in those kind of areas. So, so I know that the, uh, the, the goal of every engineer is to see their, their work being put into practice. Uh, and, and I'm holding a piece right here uh, from, a, from a, a practical example of using uh, your, your process now uh, in connection with our high pressure heat treatment equipment. Um, and can you tell us a bit about this and what it's all about and, and what kind of uh, activities are ongoing? Yeah, so the part you are holding is, uh, is a suspension holder for the Formula student car in, at Chalmers. So the students there have uh, uh, designed the part uh, using topology optimization and such to fit into the car and be as lightweight as possible. Um, the part was then printed uh, at our facility um, and then tested and they could see that it, it broke in uh, one of the areas as you can see in the image. Um, but then after introducing HIP, uh, they could see that uh, when test doing the same testing condition, the part never broke. It was actually the glue fixating the the mechanism when they were pulling the part that broke before the part, so they could increase the um, performance of the part uh, a lot with the introducing the hip to the part. And, and it holds the, during their their uh, their competitions, so it never failed. So that's good. <laughs> right, excellent. So, so it's actually been put on a car then. Yeah, uh, it's been actually... uh, driving in some different competitions. Uh, so it, it's a cool application. And, and of course the car went faster than everybody else's car, I'm guessing. I actually don't know about the results, but I don't think they won, but uh, at least the suspension was not failing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good, uh, a good, a good uh, topic then for us. Yeah, so really, really nice. So the, um, 
So, so what you're saying is that the, the, there were fatigue cracks in the uh, printed and heat treated material, but not in the, the hip and high pressure heat treatment with the T6 integrated uh, heat treatment. Exactly. It, uh, they get, got the, um, an initiation of the uh, breaking at the, at the part you're holding there in your left hand. So yeah. some kind of uh, yeah, uh, so. poor, poor uh, material properties in, in that area uh, made it fail. So the fatigue was improved with, uh, with the hipping. And, and it's actually very light. So, did, did you manage to save how much weight? Do you know? Do you know how much weight they managed to save in the part? Don't know that number, unfortunately. But I could imagine it's uh, quite a lot, uh, since it's the design volume is quite big. If you look at the different the bounding box of the entire part, so I could imagine they saved uh, a lot of uh, material. Right, and, and at the moment I know we're working in, in, a, in a project on, on other suspension parts as well, so I think there'll be uh, quite a lot of interest coming out of this with the publications, etc. Okay, so, so Sebastian, in the, in the Research Institute of Sweden, in, uh, down in Gothenburg area, I know you're working with a fantastic application centre at the moment. I mean, what's going on there? What are you working with? What kind of technologies can you offer to the industry? Yeah, so so it's a work that's been uh, been in progress for a couple of years now to get this uh, um, to land. So we just launched it. So it's um, it's a bit, uh, basically a playground for the Swedish industry to come and learn about uh, 3D printing. So we are expanding our um, machine park, uh, getting more technologies in. We are expanding with the uh, post processing, getting, for example, a hip in in our in our facility. Um, uh, and, and and the industry uh, are really eager to learn, so it's really fun. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of work. But uh, uh, it's it's nice that the industry wants to learn more about 3D printing. Yeah. So what kind of companies are involved in the in this center? Um, there are several uh, Quintus, of course, but also uh, some of the bigger Swedish companies, uh, uh, Volvo Trucks uh, or Volvo Group. Uh, there's uh, Volvo Cars, uh, Höganäs, uh, Alfa Laval, Siemens, and, and more. Uh, so it's it's an um, impressive uh, lineup, and it's really fun. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today and uh, I think it was really, really excellent discussion and uh, looking forward to future cooperation with you. Yeah, thank you for having me, it's been uh, a pleasure. And if there's any companies or uh, universities that want to do collaboration, uh, we are uh, open for it. Uh, we do a lot of work with uh, European and global companies and universities, so just feel free to contact us and we can get working. Absolutely, and uh, thanks once again, Sebastian. Tune in for some more Tech Talks as well online. Uh, I think there's a lot to be learned here, and uh, the excellent work that's been done at RISE around the aluminium silicon 10 MG, uh, al al aluminium alloys. Excellent work. Uh, we got some really great results, and I'm sure this is gonna make a huge difference to the industry going forward. So uh, thanks once more for your time, and uh, tune in next time.